So this is a little eBay find. Um, I've been still working on my little transmitter project. Um, and so it's coming along. I've got the functionality piece of it fairly down well. Um, but when I get into the details of it, I start to encounter some little problems, which is going to take some more work. Um, so I, I'll show you a sort of a, a functional diagram of it in a, in a bit. But I thought to add to the retro look of the thing, I'd look for some uh, retro type VU meters. And so I found these two little beauties for not too much money. And comes complete with controller, um, which drives obviously the VU meters and they're backlit so there's an LED in each one. Um, and yeah, I thought that'd be a nice little addition. So these will feature somewhere on the front panel of my super duper transmitter jobby project. So uh, I'll show you the uh, what the functional block diagram looks like. Okay, this is the functional diagram of what the uh, little transmitter project looks like. So I have uh, the FM transmitter, the AM transmitter, the internet and DAB radio module. I added the VU meter controller with the two VU meters. Then each of these guys has various controls and displays and knobs and things on the front. And a power supply at the moment which looks like it will be... Um, two of these guys need AC supplies and two of them need DC supplies. So a little bit of work to do there. The one thing I'm thinking about or not too sure what to do about is the main audio that goes to the tr either of the transmitters and to the VU meter comes out of here and so it has to go to the VU meter and either of these two transmitters uh, and so I'm a little worried about impedance so I may have to put some sort of a buffer in here to do the impedance uh, to do the load balancing if you like um, not sure yet um, the other little challenge is the FM transmitter and the AM transmitter all jump into life when you power them on so selecting them could be just as simple as enabling the power to them however the internet radio and the DAB module is more complicated and so when you power it on it looks like it does a sort of a boot routine but then there's an on off button you have to push for the thing to do anything uh, so to figure out how I implement that. So that's what it's looking like at the moment. If you guys have any suggestions on how I take care of all this impedance loading here, that would be really cool. Let me know. Okay guys, it's tool time. Um, I got some vacation coming up, I got some ideas for some projects I want to do, and I thought, yeah, a bit of woodworking coming up. Um, and so I've always been a fan of Japanese saws. Um, and so this one I've had for a long, long time, I don't know, years and years. Um, and it's still going good. Yeah, there's no real damage to teeth, the blade is not wrinkled in any way. Uh, and it's a disposable blade. Um, and so it still cuts very, very well. This one I got, um, this is a large, you know, for ripping and uh, cross cutting. Um, uh, but I haven't really had a use for it, I'll be honest, because you would use this if you're on a building site. Um, and you were doing large, large amounts of uh, big beam type work and so on. Um, and you can see, I don't know if you can see it on here, but the teeth are smaller and they get bigger as they go up to the end. Um, and there's obviously two different teeth uh, pitches here. So I haven't really used this one to any great extent other than to try it out. Um, and then the third one I've had for a while, which not really, I think, the, the genuine article, but this is, uh, I got this uh, from Stumac, who do the Luthery stuff, but it takes the Japanese saw principle. There's nothing on it as to where it was actually manufactured, it just has their logo on it. Um, but it takes the, if you like, the principle of the Japanese saw blade, 
and puts what I call a western <laughs> tenon saw top on it and it's intended really for uh, cutting fret slots in the fretboard and you can fit um, guides to the blade um, and then you can set how much of the blade is exposed so when you cut um, you, you, your depth is limited, it's a depth stop basically, it runs along the blade and I do have the uh, the guide for this uh, somewhere um, so yeah, so those I've had for quite a while and I decided time to update so um, I got one of these dual purpose uh, saws except on a much smaller scale and so the ones I got are made by an outfit called Jokucho and uh, these are recommended by a, a YouTuber called a samurai woodworker if I recall correctly who does amazing work um, and so I thought if these are good enough for him they're good enough for me so I haven't messed with these at all yet but they are just beautiful uh, pieces of artistry um, and then this one is Again, the teeth are fairly large on this, so I think you could use this one for ripping. Um, and it's interesting, I don't know if it's a translation problem or not. Um, see if I can find a packet. Right, because it calls it, on, on the little bit of English that's on here, it calls it a disposable saw. 240 mil. Um, most of the rest is in Japanese, except a little bit on how to fit the blade to the handle, which is fairly obvious once you look at it. Um, the other one I got said it's a replacement. Um, but it is a complete saw, so here you have the blade, here you have the handle, you have everything. And the only difference is the teeth are much smaller on this one, so this is going to be the cross-cutting version. Whereas this is going to be the ripping version. And last but not least, going from big to small, I've got a little flush cutting saw. And uh, this is just a, a thing of beauty. So again, two different te teeth pitches, but uh, no rake on them at all. So uh, these will cut the uh, Cut things off dead flush without risking the surrounding wood. So there we go, that's it for saws. Um, what else? Block plane. So what we have here is a number nine and a half low angle Stan Lee block plane. And uh, I think it's fair to say that Stan Lee is definitely having a type of uh, resurgence. Um, and certainly this this is an extremely heavy uh, plane um, and for instance I have a plane which is way way larger than this which I got when uh, Stanley was much more into the, the low end in terms of quality and stuff um, but this guy is gorgeous um, he's a, movable front plate so you can set the throat here a low angle of the blade, adjustable blade just gorgeous this thing very heavy, very heavy so looking forward to uh, playing around with this either interestingly I was obviously curious as to where this may have been made and I can find no mention anywhere on the box, on the device itself or anywhere on the box or anywhere on the documentation that might indicate <laughs> where the device was made um, but in any case it is a uh, it is a really nice well engineered piece of gear um, so I'm very pleased with it uh, so there we go number nine and a half block lane um, incidentally there are completely different uh, approaches to how you hand plane uh, I don't know if any of you guys have seen these. This is actually a Swiss plane and this is sort of a, a completely different idea here because 
the blade in this thing is like a razor blade and it's disposable and so the, the body of the plane is literally just a, a U piece of steel um, good quality obviously all nicely leveled and squared and you adjust the uh, how much the blades protrudes by pushing this lever up and down um, and then there's a little gadget here that you just flip it up and you can take out the blade holder and you replace the blade so you never have to do sharpening um, so again um, a completely different approach uh, to how you do planing and uh, this has served me well over the years I've had this quite a long time and I've only changed the blade maybe three times um, and for light work and small work it's it's pretty convenient that's for sure although I expect the uh, the Stanley will probably take over now um, okay lastly we got chisels wood chisels cabinet makers chisels um, so I do have a couple of chisels that I bought ad hoc over the years but never a set of chisels a proper set of chisels so I sort of fell for these when I saw them and uh, they look pretty gorgeous so uh, what we got here is uh, six chisels which go from 6 mil 6, 10, 12, 16, 20, 24 and uh, they are beautiful I don't know what wood this uh, handle is made of and it's probably stained but it's dark uh, all made in the Czech Republic um, this ferrule here looks to be like a sort of bronze color it's not brass it's not copper it's somewhere in the middle and uh, the quality of uh, looks really good of course time will tell <laughs> when I come to use them um, but yeah I'm really pleased with these they look really cool um, and so for the first time I have an actual set of uh, cabinet makers chisels and so looking forward to using these as well so there we go that's tool update